and we're live. Awesome. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Mofi. I'm a developer advocate at IBM, and I have Nick with me. I'm Nick. I'm also a developer advocate at IBM. And today we're going to talk about, so yeah, Nick will tell us what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, so today we're going to start it's the first course of many talking about artificial intelligence, mainly geared towards uh, computer vision topics. Okay. Um, so today I'm going to try and teach you how to um, build a very basic neural network using no library codes. Um, okay. Layman question, what yeah. is a neural network? <laughs> right. So uh, to, to explain that, I'm going to try and write on the screen. Okay, so let's uh, save that for you. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Now I'm going to move this just a little bit so that it's easier for people to see. There you go. Cool. All right. So a neural network is, if you've ever seen one online, um, it probably was a bunch of circles like this. And each one is connected to another circle. I have seen something similar, yes. Right, and, and you probably just, like, what does this mean, right? Yeah, and, and, and I, I seen things like a hidden layer, multiple layers, and you have, like, some dots. Right. But um, my biggest question I had all the time is that, so who is writing hidden layer? What does it mean? Like, why right. is this layer hidden? And how do I know where it is and what it right. is? So all sorts of questions. So, yeah. So, uh, to, to start off, um, before we talk about hidden layers and input layers and output layers and um, all of these kind of terminologies, there's a lot of terminologies that um, I think it kind of makes things a little bit confusing. It is very um, confusing. For sure. Um, but a lot of these terms, they all mean the same thing. Um, and it, it just can be a little bit difficult to, to wrap your mind around it all. Um, so uh, in, in, in a basic neural network like this, uh, these these three nodes here in the middle, um, I guess you probably can't see me pointing. Is it like a um, highlight? I'm going to do this. Or, yeah, just draw it. Or highlight, yeah. Yeah, so these like these three nodes here in the middle, that's what people would call a hidden layer. Um, and, and that doesn't really mean too much of anything. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about what that means. Um, and then these are your inputs. And this is your output over here. Uh, so, pretty much a hidden layer is anything that isn't an input or an output. And, and those are huh. just the, the very last and very beginning things in the network. Are the inputs and so, just to clarify though, so the things that we're calling hidden layer, as, a, as, as a, like a developer of an AI algorithm, you know what they are. Right. It's just like from a point of view of a user, no one's going to interact with them directly. Right. So, if we draw another picture, um, put on a new page. Um, say we have uh, two inputs, uh, five and six, and it's just going to go into like this big black box questionable AI, and it's going to give us an output. Um, and this output, let's just say it's the, the sum of five and six, so it, this should give us 11. Okay. Um, and the, the hidden layers are, are the, the layers in the network up here that, uh, that are kind of calculating uh, this value. So, so we're just giving it these five and six. This five and six uh, relates to this and this, these, okay. these two inputs. And then this output, 11, that's this node right here. Okay. okay. So how we get this output value calculated, um, so we put a 5 here. I'm going to actually redraw this. Okay. You can just copy it if you want. Oh, it's okay. okay. I'm start over. Um, so we have our 5 and our 6. Okay. Those are the inputs. Yeah, these are our two inputs. Uh, and then we have three outputs. Three outputs, or, or uh, sorry, three hidden layers. Okay. And I draw these nice and wide so I can write stuff in them. Okay. So, 
if I understand correctly now, the hidden layer, I mean, I didn't finish understanding it completely, but the hidden layer is basically where the actual computation happens. Uh, yeah, kind of. Okay. Uh, and then, so, you remember there was all the lines connecting in right. front of each. So, each one of these lines connects to one of the inputs. So, and each uh, of these connections have a, a weight associated with them. So, I'm just going to name this, like, weight 1. And this goes into this, this first node. And then uh, weight two. This goes into the second node. And then this weight three goes into this third node. And so what happens when this five goes through this first connection right here, this weight one? The five gets multiplied by this first weight. So, so here, this um, first hidden layer node, the the value of that node would be five times weight one. Okay. In this in this uh, current state, um, but then there's six here. So the six, let's call this weight four, and that also goes into the first node. Mm -hmm. So then we add. Uh, first, we multiply six by weight four. And is this weight decided by us as a developer, or is it like arbitrarily chosen? Um, so. We're going to learn how these weights are chosen in a uh, uh, coming week. OK, but like, um, but, but, but it's, it's not the developer that handpicks them. It's, okay. it's the AI training process that uh, changes, changes the, weight. the weights okay. to, to a good weight. Also, I think when you say, like, the, you just said, like, a good weight, I think the weight is kind of the way to then, like, guide the uh, hidden layer to put more emphasis on certain values then? Is it is it um, safe to assume that or because like for example if you had something that has a weight of hundred versus mm -hmm. something that has a weight of like five the thing that has a weight of hundred that's gonna get more value in that final end result then right yeah. okay yeah. Um, so so this gets added to here so six times weight four okay and you do the similar process for all the other ones all right so then this goes in here this goes here. And then this is weight five, five and weight six, six. and then uh, five, w, five W two and uh, six W five, right? Five W two, six W five times W five, uh, and then five times W three plus six plus W six, six. times. Ah, yep. Oh, well, better than this. <laughs> okay. So we're good. We're at we're at the hidden layer, um, and then and when you say like this plus, is it is it always like a like a plus operation on the all the on the inputs, or is it like based on the hidden layer is going to different things? Uh, yeah. So each hidden layer, it's always going to be an addition. Okay. Uh, of the multiply the weight and add the all the inputs coming in. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then finally, we have our output. Um, and I'll just draw this like, actually, I'll label these, um, I'm just going to call this H1, because it's a hidden layer one, okay. or hidden node. So each, the, there's there's layers, and then there's nodes. The nodes so are there is circles. A, there is the entire column of yeah. nodes, and each of those circles is one single node. Then. Right. Okay. So I'm going to layer uh, label each one of these uh, hidden nodes um, H1, H2, H3. Okay. Just for easier um, results back here. Um, so all of these. And H, H1 is the name of the node or the result of that node? Um, it's it's going to be this value. That's okay, so H1 one. is the value that comes after like you do the uh, this, uh, map. Like the math of this, right? Right. So. Uh, so just like which so H one yeah, so H one is this calculation this calculation okay yeah and then H two would be this okay and H three would be this okay cool um, so then in here this is your output right we end up getting H one oh. Each one of these uh, connections also have a, a weight attached. Okay. So this is going to be weight seven, seven 
Wait, eight. Wait, nine. Okay. Um, and then we have this big node over here. And then it's going to be H1 times W7. Okay. Plus H2 times W8. Plus H3 times W9. Okay. And then so that calculation right here, that's going to be what the, our answer is going to be. When we put in 5 and 6. So let's say we have a 5 and 6, and uh, and we want our particular black box machine learning algorithm to return 11 as the summation. But we don't really tell explicitly to add it. Right. But then we want to just basically then tweak the weights in a certain way so that it comes back out as 11. Right. So that next time a new number comes in, like when you pass through it, we're then expecting the same weights to return the summation of those numbers. Right. So um, in order to train this, we would keep showing it pairs of numbers, and then we would put those numbers through the network, and it would give us a number back. And in the beginning, it would just be a completely random number. And we would see that the number doesn't match what it's supposed to be, and then we tweak the weights until it starts looking more like that number. And we keep showing more and more pairs um, so that it starts to try and model the function. So basically, that's where the, the, the training data set comes in, right? So you have basically a bunch of examples, like where input is 5 and 6, your output data should be 11. Right. And you pass it through your non-trained machine learning model, and it turns something like 37. Right. And it knows that it's wrong. You have to like, tweak something. Right. So that tweaking, um, so you have at this moment with like about nine weights. So you have like a nine um, or order of like function. You have nine variables, right. right? So how is this weight then deciding which to increase, which to decrease? I mean, let's say the number we get finally it's it's a higher number than what we wanted. So basically, I think since all of them are add operations and multiple operations, I'm going to decrease my weights. Does this weight have some sort of range that it works between? Um, and so the, the weights aren't necessarily like positive values, so they could be positive or negative. Okay. So it could be uh, changing them in like multiple directions. And uh, training is something we're going to go into a lot more detail later on. So okay. just uh, it's hard to, to accept, but right now we're magically getting these weight numbers. Right. I mean, I mean, the thing is the fact that the final result is a summation, I can already like guess uh, like a good weight number. For example, if I just chose weight one and weight four as one and everything else as zero, and over here probably weight seven as one, I would actually get the result I want. Right. Right. So. And, and there could be like many different Right. Uh, I mean, the case, I mean when, you, when you like go to the realm of decimal numbers, Right. Mm -hmm. You might, for 5 and 6, you might have like multiple operations to get to 11, but for a different number, the decimal number might not work anymore. Right. So you're basically then, so it's more of a like a what gives better result for everything versus just this one solution, maybe, I think. Right. Okay. Um, okay. And then, so um, I saw in, on a, a Udacity course that was teaching TensorFlow, a cool example where they sort of, um, they, they, they took a very simple function like um, the uh, conversion of Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, and then, so to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, oops. Uh, so Celsius would equal uh, 32 plus 1.8 times uh, Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's, right. the, that's the basic formula that we know. Yes. Right. Um, and we can teach uh, an extremely simple neural network, this, this, uh, this equation. Um, so if we have a, a simple, just two layers, an input and an output. OK. Um, so in here, there's no, no hidden layer, just an input and an output. Uh -huh. Um, we have our... So the input is the Celsius value. Right. Our input is the Celsius. Oops. Not right today. Our Celsius and the output will be the Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, so this ends up being... Uh, the Fahrenheit would end up just being C times uh, this weight. 
but you might notice there's there's no way to actually map this function um, right like this because um, there's there's just a multiplication yeah um, and that's actually you might say well if I had more layers like this you could probably map it better but it's still not exactly true um, and the reason why is because this isn't 100% what the neural network will look like. There's actually one more uh, piece to this puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so if you think about this, this function, if we have, let's say here, think of it as a function. Um, anytime we put in zero, we're always going to get zero. Right. So we're stuck mapped at this point. So we can map any of like these functions, but we couldn't map something like this. Right. So, if in terms of math, like how do you think we can get from being stuck at this origin to being anywhere? I mean, I was thinking I'm gonna just have another input just of like plane 32 all the time. Then it will be 32 times another weight, which I'm gonna set to one. So it's gonna be that 32 plus c times something. Right. So yeah, like a an, another basically like kind an of offset constant. Yeah, an offset. Um, and you're you're close, but it's you had it backwards. So we're going to add another node right here. And it's always going to be 1. And it's going to have a weight. Uh, and we'll just call this B1, because it, this is what we call our bias term. So that one doesn't get influenced by your input at all? No. Okay. It's always 1. And it's multiplied by this bias weight. Okay. So it ends up being this number plus one times this one bias. And then so if we look back here, um, we have this bias going in here and this weight. So we can just be one. Okay. So then it would be plus B plus B one. And then the obvious solution here it would be um, thirty two for the bias, right? If we set the bias to thirty two and the weight one to one point eight. Right. right. Okay. So now, now, the, now the question is, if we were to try to like train like based on like thousands of, um, again, I'm probably like asking a question that is uh, probably beyond what we're going to talk about today. But if we had, let's say, like a thousand data set for Celsius to Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. um, we expect our model then to slowly move towards for the weight, weight one to move to 1.8 and for the bias to move towards 32. Right. Right. Okay. Um, but in practice, you wouldn't ever really have a a network this small, right? And it would just it would look something more like this, and these weights would be something fuzzier. Um, we wouldn't really be able to tell exactly how that function maps. But I think this is a, a nice example because you can always see sort of like the map behind right. what's going on. Um, and I think, do you have any more questions? I think we might be able to move on to trying to code something. Like that. Uh, I mean, I mean again. Many of the questions are kind of like, so. If I were to like, it seems like a very straightforward mathematical operation, right? So mm -hmm. that means if I, if you and I have the same data set, and if you and I try to have the same structure of a neural network and train it, we are expected to get the exact same model then. Um, in this particular structure, at least. So whenever we train it, there's there's still like a lot of randomness involved, and there's um, whenever you train, you train for a certain amount of like time, and the more you train it, either it gets better or it starts getting like overfit, and the it starts getting worse. So we might have close models, but they probably won't really be exactly the same. So when you said the word overfit, you mean something like it's so trained on the current data set we're training it on. Like it just kind of almost like memorizes the answer from the current data set and it doesn't do well on like a new data set. Right. So like if we look at this like sort of these dots might be really tiny. But if we look at this, uh, it might be yeah. 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 So if we look at these dots, to us it might be obvious to just draw a nice straight line through it. Um, and that'll model things pretty well. Okay. But once we start to overfit, it might start going like this 
kind of a crazy pattern, which it'll still do really well with, for, data, with these data. Okay. But once you go to other things, it's not very like generalized. So, and this is probably like a more of the software engineer and me speaking, but how do you then, um, so, I mean, the word testing and training comes in the model, but how do you then truly test the quality of the model? I'm just because what it sounds like when you do machine learning, your test is basically, again, just using the data model against some data. But how do you then like objectively test a model that it's truly good or bad? Right, so it's when you're collecting your training data, uh, it's, it's good practice to split it and have training data and test data. So when you run it with your, your training data, you're also testing it as it goes on with your, your testing data. And you can see whenever um, your accuracy might be going up for, for your test, and it's going up for your, uh, for, your, for your test data. But then all of a sudden, it might start going, be going like this, even though this is still going up then you can kind of see that it's starting to overfit on your... Right, so like the point is like you did this. Is there any way to like, let's say, roll back? Like let's say you did, you did train it for like 10 hours mm -hmm. and you you are not constantly like staring at the graph what's going on. So you probably kind of like have some sort of other tool that's checking the correction of your algorithm. So you see around seven hour mark, it started like taking a dip. Right. Is there like, but it, you saw it after 10 hours. Right. A, lot of, a lot of people they they uh, they checkpoint their models so like after like every thousand steps it'll output a model. Okay, so there um, is no way to let's say like I did ten hours. Let's say I want to go back to seven hours. There is no way to go back from the current model like three hours back. Uh, well, whenever you're outputting right now without data. snapshotting, like um, right. Yeah, you can't really. At least I've never seen people like wind back their model. Um, but also, like a lot of training libraries, they have like a kind of a counter, and whenever they see like the uh, validation or testing data results dipping, okay. it'll stop training. But is it like when it starts dipping? Is the, is it ever a chance that it even picks back up? Uh, it's it's something like like a lot of time it's not uh, ever really this smooth. A lot of times it'll be like very jaggedy. Kind of jaggedy. Okay. okay. And you, that's like something that you just kind of like, there's an art to it. You got to play around with it a little bit to see, like, you don't normally say, like, oh, if it goes down at all, just completely cut it. It's normally like if it's like gradually going down over like a thousand or so steps, then like. So when you good. say steps, each of these steps means what? Like one new data set, or what does a step truly mean? Okay, so there's uh, a few different words. There's like epoch, steps, epoch batches. Is time, right. right. So um, with our, oh, actually, I don't have the data set here. But let's say we have like 30 examples. Okay. Um, all right, I might get this backwards, but I think one step is. Okay, so with your 30 examples, you'd break them into smaller batches sometimes. Normally with, with, uh, with these 30, like, just numbers, you don't really need to split them up into batches because our computer can, like, handle computing them all at once. Okay. Um, and it's, it, so, um, when we go back to here, where we were saying, like, when we show one example and it gives us an 11, uh -huh. and we show in another example, it's, it's not always going to be like the same number and the weights aren't going to be the same. So we want to calculate like all of them at the same time so we know how to adjust it so that it doesn't like break for the other training data. Okay. So we want to like give it as much of the training data as we can at one time. But for a lot of computers, we don't have enough memory. If like the network's really big and we have like a lot of images, like thousands of images, um, it's like way too computationally heavy to try to do that all at once. So we it, break it, it into smaller batches. Is that why people would use a like GPU to train? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I think like again, this kind of question is gonna keep coming up, and right. you know, and I hopefully like people that are watching either now or later on YouTube will have also questions regarding this. 
but I understand it's like such a big topic. So let's uh, let's uh, move on to the next topic, whatever you have in store for us, and see. Uh, yeah, you can come back to the explanation later if you need to. So I think we're we'll, let's try to build this um, this network right here, this um, addition network okay. in uh, in Python, and we're going to try to not use any libraries. I already trained the model, okay. so I have the weights, and we're just going to drop the weights in. Okay, so when you say you already trained the model, like you trained the model, like what does that mean? Um, so I gave the model a bunch of pairs of numbers and the, the sum. Okay. And I trained the model on that data, and then I took the weights from that trained model, and then we can just drop it into like our model. Okay. That's just like this sort of structure. Um, okay, let's need to quickly get you to... Mm. Sorry for my mouse. I don't. Oh, okay. Here. I can move this. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so, first file and your. I'll take that. And. All right, so I'm just going to call this part one. So, um, if we go back to, can we show like both at the same time? Uh, the screen as well? Yeah. We could, probably. Who knows? Hold on. Okay. And make, make, then make it smaller, right? Sure, yeah. Uh, okay, and I can, I can actually make it always on top. That way, it will not go away. Yeah. As you click on it, as you, you can also type in. Without this going away. So where do you want it on that first side? Uh, just make it like slightly small. Okay. And then in that corner of this one. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So we see like the, the five and six inputs. Um, just undo. Oh. You can you can make it. <laughs> you want to get rid of this? Uh, yeah. Oh wow. What do you make beautiful? Okay. So we have these inputs five and six. So let's start by input zero equals five. Input one equals. You want to have such a small number? You can just have something bigger if you want. Yeah, we'll just we'll leave the five, six, and okay. eleven as the answer. For now. I mean, people might think you're taking it too easy. Five and six, anyone? Well, what well, we can uh, we can toggle these okay. numbers as much as we want. Okay, and then. So, as we, we still have like this H1, uh -huh. I'm actually going to use this model had uh, four hidden nodes in the hidden layer. So, I'm going to do H0 equals, and then this is where we, that's the, oh. <laughs> this right here. So, that's going to be, Five, which was our input, so input zero times weight one, which I have in a nice array, so it's going to be weight zero zero plus. Um, then we have our uh, six, which is input. One. Okay. And uh, for our viewers who is uh, watching Nick struggle to type, it's because I just uh, <laughs> gave Nick a keyword he never typed in before. <laughs> so just to, just to, you know, just for some entertainment. Uh, the, the keys are so deep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can literally put me on a keyboard, like, just from it, like a MacBook or an earlier version, and I will not find any key. I don't know, like, my brain literally just shuts off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find any case. So okay, yeah. So that's that's the reason why Nick looks like you know he, he can actually type pretty well. <laughs> and then um, we have this other bias here, which will be going into here. Um, so then so 
So the bias can be in any layer. Each layer can have separate bias. Yeah, each layer has a bias with it. So the, so the input layer, layer has, has a bias. Yeah. The hidden layers, however many hidden layers we have, we have a bias as well. Right. Okay. And I mean, you don't have to have a bias if you don't want to. It's I mean, if you don't have a bias, basically you're saying your bias is zero. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then so we have to add our bias in. So that's going to be bias zero of zero. Can we make this uh, font smaller? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it can do. Okay, that's probably good. Okay. Um, all right. So we have this. This first. Does this make sense to you? H zero. Yeah, I mean, we're just basically writing out what whatever we had, uh, whatever we had, in in this this box, right? Right. And plus this bias coming in. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That that makes perfect. Sense. And and the bias it's it's one times the bias, but right. you can just do the bias. Right. Right. Uh, okay. So but the rest yeah. of the things, do you want to just like you already coded it up, so you want to just bring that code in? That's okay. I'll just copy this. Okay. Uh, no, command is the next one. This is the command button. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Or can I actually do some? I can actually do something better for you. Okay. No, that's okay. Like one B. Yeah, that one. That one is still the same. Okay. Right, so now we have four of these layers. There are four of these nodes. Sorry. Um. So then let's just name this H1, H2, H3. And then it's our input times uh, this one, two, three. So and the weight and the bias are gonna be uh, like some uh, arrays or metric metrics you have already like you gotten from training the data before. Right. So it the the, the format that these um, we're just doing this all by hand. We're not using libraries. So. Right. Um, normally, you don't really have to like interact with these weights and layers like this. So just have a. I'll, I'll go into more details later. I have a Keras example. Okay. Where um, it's like really nice. You just have like a. Here's my model, and then we want to add a one hidden layer with X nodes and this hidden layer with this many nodes, and it'll it'll kind of do all of this for us. Okay. But just so you can see what's going on, um, we'll just do this all for you. So now we have our output. You probably have to like scroll down a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just out of the way. Um, so we have our output, and that's going to just be our page zero times the our other set of weights, weights one of zero zero. Um, H1. So copy this, these two. Once again, it's a uh, command button. Yeah. <laughs> this mouse is horrible. <laughs> Alright, so one, two, three, four. I, it's four because we had uh, four nodes. Four nodes. Okay. Um, so H1, H2, H3, and then zeros. Yeah. Um, and then we just need to update this to 1, two, And then, of course, we have our bias term. So this is going to be bias. Bias one of zero. Nice. Okay. Perfect. OK. Then we're just going to print out the output. And then, well, we need these weights. 
So let's do the top of these again. I'm just going to drop them in right here. So this is just being copied from the weeks that you already created. Yeah, so okay. these weights are already, already trained. So as you can see, they're just kind of like an interesting collection of numbers. Um, and then if we run this, we should get an output. If our Python environment's all set up and I didn't make any crazy typos. You didn't save the file after you oh. pasted it. Thank you. So Python part one dot pi. All right, what did we do? Weight is not defined. I think it's it, it, no it, weights. It's supposed to be called yeah. yeah. Okay. Call. Weights. Weights. We also have some weights on that side. Weights. And uh, those of you who try to like probably do that themselves, we are using Python version uh, three point six. And with this particular one, you don't really need any other libraries if I'm not. Mistaken, right? We're right. doing vanilla Python. Yep. Okay. And it's I think it's called weight zero. zero. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I just looked at the thing you copied in. So yeah. So um, and also, are this code is going to be available. Yeah, we'll uh, post this code okay. somewhere. So yeah, if you're watching it either now or you want to like follow along, it's going to be I'll post it also on YouTube at the channel at Movie Codes. Um, so okay. as you can see, 11. And it's not exactly 11 just because, you know, math is right. fuzzy. Um, I mean, but it's, it's pretty, pretty close. Um, and now, now what numbers would you like to try? I would want to try 1,024. 1,024. And add um, 76 to it. 76. Should I save it? <laughs> I just want to, like, stay with my 11. So 1,100. Hey, okay. Yeah, we're still close to eleven. So uh does it it doesn't do decimal numbers, does it? Would it do decimal numbers? We can try. Okay. Um because I know what what number do you want? I, I want uh one. One plus uh we're going to add uh, uh one point nine nine. Yeah, so I want to see like close to right, three what happens. Let's see, let's see. This is uh Okay, two point nine nine. Okay, no, I can respect that. Okay, okay, pretty good. Yeah, I pretty mean, good. this this is closer than how JavaScript handles from decimal numbers. So <laughs> nice, nice. A lot of a lot of uh, shade being thrown. If you do <laughs> JavaScript, um, yeah. So if you do JavaScript, uh, no, no, no hard feelings. Right, the number calculation in JavaScript is not the best. But anyway, so. Um, so now um, I'm going to show you. There's there's another thing I didn't tell you about this, this oh, neural network. You were you were keeping a lot of secrets from me. Yes, lots of secrets. Um, so and I have to get back this. I think uh, uh, that's okay. I don't need it. Okay. I think you're good. Um, so you might have actually yeah. Give me that. Um, Set it up. This went away. I'll get it back. No oh, worries. Oh man, come on. Ah. There we go. Cool. So, if you remember, uh, here we were nicely mapping this this linear function, mm -hmm. and in this current state, we can map any linear function. Okay. I'm just gonna get back this path. Okay. Go ahead. So we can map map any linear function. Great. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. But like that's not so cool because we could just do like some linear regression, right? Linear regression. <laughs> right. <laughs> For those of you that didn't take lots of uh, calculus and whatever, you would learn linear regression, and uh, it's just uh, line fitting. Ah, right. Okay. So I mean, uh, I I think I learned linear regression from probability. Right. Is it the, is it the same idea here as well? Yeah. Yeah. So you're just given like these these points. Just fitting a nice line through it. Okay. Um, which we don't need like a crazy neural network with like millions of nodes to just fit a line, right? Okay. And so the problem is, as like we noticed here before with like this bias, we needed to shift, be able to shift the, the line around. 
now we need a way to make this line not a line. We need to be able to like fit curves and fancy shapes of sorts. Um, and like I have an example that hopefully I can drag and drop the toad. So if we look at our, thank you. You can just click on the side, it's going to go off here. I thought we, we stuck it. Oh, we stuck it. We did click it. Okay. So I'm just going to pull him down. All right, let me make a new file. Ugh. <laughs> Killing me. Hold on. Uh, let me quickly switch this to the end now. Something goes wrong. Okay. Who will actually click this? Um, 3D sum dot pi. And then I'm just going to paste that code into here. Okay, and then so this code here is just taking um, uh, the, it's, it's, we're just going to plot this function that we mapped earlier with the addition. So I'm just getting a bunch of numbers, a thousand numbers between negative 20 and 20. And I'm adding all of them together to get this, this third dimension, the z. And I'm just, just plotting it. Um, um, I think we don't have MPL toolkits. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we, we just have. Well, something happened, but it happened on the different screen. I'm going to just grab this and bring it on this. Ah, oh, come on. Did it go? Oh, seriously? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can do it. Hold on. I can. I, I believe in me. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. So here's our, our beautiful um, function that we, we were able to map. And like, so for those of you wondering, like, um, the, you know, is is addition, um, is it like a nice linear function? And that's why it works so well is because it's really easy to map this. It's a, it's a plane, but it's still like linear. Right, like if you know just three points in this plane, you can literally map anything as long as it's to infinity in any direction actually because right. any plane can be defined by three points. So that's why this works so well. That's why our very simple version of the neural network was working is because this is still linear. But if we were to change like this plus to multiply, is it asking for trouble? Um, where'd it go? Uh, it's still there, but it's just to close it. Control C. Um, control C. I'll just, control C. <laughs> It'll just take a while to close it. Huh. <laughs> Maybe it takes that long. Yeah, oh. If you don't properly close it, it just is fun. Oh. I see. But I don't know how to. Yeah, it, it just goes hidden. I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> Alright, let's just hide this. There we go. X. <laughs> uh, you see the code right there. There you go. Oh, you hit it. Oh, it's going to be here then. Alright, okay. now this is 3D multiplication, as you can see. Oh, it's not. It went to the other screen insane. again. Uh, I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring it. Yeah. Uh, okay, and I know I have to do it. I did it once already. Okay. okay. So here, here's our nice multiplication, as you can see. Uh -huh. This is not in any way linear function. So if we tried to to do the same sort of uh, neural network we did with this. We wouldn't be able to successfully map it. It would give us like a bunch of garbage because it's uh, not linear. Um, right. So it'll work, probably work for a couple of things, but almost by accident because it just right. right. Okay. The, there'll be like a, a bad plane just straight. Right. Through. For example, like if you're looking at like some, this line here, right. so you'll probably be able to guess some of them. Right. But like if you're, if your number is supposed to be here. You're gonna be like keep constantly keep getting worse and worse results. Right. 
Okay, I can close this one, right? Do you still need it? Yeah, you can close it. Okay, good. All right, so uh, if we go back to this uh, iPad screen. Um, so when we were here with, with this and we, we were able to shift the line, do you have any like ideas on how we can make this line not be a line? Like what can we do to it so to make it not always be like like right now we're just doing addition and multiplication. What what kind of like thing can we do to make it not so straight? Hmm. Can't think of anything right now. All right. Brain freeze. It's okay. It's okay. Is is it something super simple that I should have known? We can uh, we can apply a nonlinearity. Which just means something, a function that's not linear. So we're like instead, so we're changing how the like inside the node works, something there. Right. So it's it's kind of like right after we we come out of this node right here, uh -huh. we're gonna apply some sort of a nonlinearity to it. Okay. Um. So make this smaller. Um. So we, we get this, this nice value, let's just say like 18. Um, we, we just need to apply a function to it that's not linear. So let me just go down here. So something like square? So like function of this 18. We need to do something to 18 just that's not linear. So like if we do 18 plus 2, that's still linear. 18 times 2. That's still linear. Um, uh, so there's. I mean, square is not linear. Yeah, we could square it. That that would make it not linear. Okay. Um, uh, a lot there's a thing called a sigmoid, and the sigmoid function kind of looks like uh, this. So the closer you get to the extremes, or the closer you get to to the middle, which should be over here. Um, it's it stops being kind of at zero and it's it's foot for forced to like negative one or one um which this is like a, a good one or like actually i think that's tan pinch same one is similar but just bound to different numbers mm -hmm. um but yeah as you can see that's not linear um, but I that, think sigma is between zero and one. It, it's yeah. just between zero and one. Right, and I think tanch is negative one. So one. like the like zero line is in the middle, like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Something like that. They're both kind of similar. Yeah, but like you're basically almost like um, I, I. So you're basically almost like applying a filter to it. Right. Um, so something. Um, yeah. Yeah, Some, and, and this, this can be anything as long as it's not like a, a straight line. And when you, you say something like sigmoid is a good one, like what do you mean by that's a good one? Um, I think sigmoid isn't necessarily a good one per se, but I think um, it was a popular one for a while. Okay. Um, nowadays, a lot of people use one that's called uh, ReLU, which if you've seen neural network stuff, you might have heard like a lot of these. Yeah, I heard, I heard this word before, I didn't know. Um, so what ReLU is, is it's also nonlinear, but it looks kind of linear. So um, here's our, our x and y intercept. I'll change the green so you can see a little thicker. Um, anything below zero is a flat line, and then anything above is a line, which it's still very straight, but just it's not linear, although right. it doesn't follow that linear trend. Um, and this is a popular one to use because it doesn't take a lot of computation. It, but because it's like almost like for the half of the number spectrum, it's linear. Other right. like, it's linear all the way almost, but it's just right. like it's an if condition almost. But it's easier to compute. I can right. say that. So like it's just um, you can do max of zero and then your 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 value. So like our 18 would still be 18, but if we had negative 18, it would be zero. It would be yeah, zero. So when you say something like one of these functions being a good function, it's is it has to do with correctness of your of your model and plus the speed of computation, something similar like the metric of being this function is being good is something to do with how fast can you do it, 
And if it, even being, like for example, linear is probably the fastest one to do. Do not think that's the fastest, right? But if you do a, like a square, that takes time to compute. But in the end, the result might not be as good as you, for the time you spent on computing it, right? And I think um, with, with squared, uh, the, the squared function, it, it looks, you know, something like this. So as um, the, the numbers can like get very extreme very fast, whereas like with like the sigmoid and stuff, it's kind of bound between zero and one, um, which is I think the, the original thinking about going with it is it's kind of closer to how the brain works. Um, you know, it's either firing or not firing. Um, and then the, the ReLU is just kind of um, a quicker way to kind of bound things at zero, but to, to infinity, um, which can have some problems as well with getting too high or getting like stuck down in zero. Um, but it's, it's just, a lot of these things are kind of just an art that you kind of play around with, but I think most of the time people have just been using rubber. Okay. Um, so yeah, and then let me go back to over here. Um, just a sec. Um, which one do I want to show? Let's show this one. Okay. Um, So what is the example we're going to look at next? Um, OK, so in this example, I'm just going to show you a basic magic. Um, so, so if I'm not mistaken, Keras is kind of a, is it an algorithm, or is it a, like a tool? Um, it's like a framework. So there's there's TensorFlow, and inside of TensorFlow um, is also Keras. And especially in TensorFlow 2.0, it's like a first class citizen. Um, and it's just a a way. It makes it a lot easier to like build out a network. And I'll go through it a little bit more. Um, so here we start out with TF Keras sequential, um, and this is kind of just telling us. Um, we want a, a very sequential network. Um, if you go back to our uh, neural network design, we had our input first, our hidden layer, maybe another hidden layer if we wanted to, and then our output layer. It's like very sequential. Um, so we can have a sequential model and add a dense layer. Um, so, so you said sequential is the one we already saw, right? Like the, the line by line. What kind of other models can you have? Uh, so. So sequential is just kind of like the way we're adding to it. It's um, it's just sort of the, the programming kind of like uh, I don't know how to describe it. Per no, se. but it, it's not necessarily like um, uh, it's just the way that we're adding the layers. Right, okay. we're adding them in a sequential way. Um, but you can like also kind of like have like object oriented um, way of putting your model together. Okay. Um, but sequential is just like where we can just add layer by layer. Um, so we're adding a dense layer. Um, here, actually, let me start off with a new one. Change some of these. I'm going to get rid of the activation. And I'm going to change this back to four. And get rid of this. Okay, so this this right here is building what we just had. We're adding uh, a dense layer with four units. So in our model, we had. Um, where did this go away again? Yeah, I'll give it to you. Hold on. You need it? Oh, it's okay. I can get around it. Okay. Um, so we had our, our four our four hidden layers. Uh huh. Um, and these hidden layers, we can also call them dense layers. That's whenever every node is connecting to every other node. Okay. That's called a dense layer. Sometimes they're called fully connected or feed forward. There's a bunch of different kind of names. For the same thing. Yeah. But it, could you have something like a sparse layer where it doesn't connect to everything? Yeah. Um, and like this, 
the, the, the dense layer is just, it's computationally heavy just because everything is connected to everything. But um, it, it would be kind of the same if you just set like um, the weights to zero, then it would kind of act still. It's still a dense layer, but not everything is connected to everything. Later on, we'll go into like convolutions, and that's like a different layer type that's not a dense layer, okay. um, just because but that, that'll be probably next, next lesson. But for now, um, four dense units, which are the four nodes, and our input shape here is one, um, just because we're going to do um, this uh, Fahrenheit conversion. Um, just kidding. We'll do. Um, never mind. Okay. Uh, so then, yeah. But then we have our, our one output and our one input. Okay. Um, so that's going to look, oops, sorry, it's not here anymore. But um, there will be one input node, four hidden nodes, and then one output node. Okay. Um, and then this model.compile, we don't really have to worry about this right now. This is just kind of telling it how we want to train it. And then here I just have a bunch of uh, training values, and then I'm just calculating the Y training values with our with our function up here. So basically, this is like the function is not being used at the model; it's just used to calculate what the actual like output value should be. Okay. Um, I'm actually gonna get rid of this one for now and change this to one. And this is going back to our our original like input to output okay. um, Celsius conversion. Um, just so I can show you what that'll look like if we just bump this up to a thousand. So is it epochs means it's doing for thousand iterations, thousand seconds? So Wait, actually, I, I copied the wrong one. <laughs> okay. That, this is my problem, why I'm having to change everything. Celsius. It's like Celsius, but hey. Yeah, I, I can't get it for you. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. All right. Sick. Okay. All right. So okay. Yeah. This is what I wanted. <laughs> so uh, we're having our one dense layer. So it's our one input, our one output. We're using the bias. Um, and then here's just our. Uh, the how we're how we're training it, and our our x and y train values, and we're training it for a thousand steps. On this one here, basically, you have both of them. You didn't use a function; you just have both of them pre-filled. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna print out the weights that we get, and also the prediction. I think today the weather was 22, which I think is 71 Fahrenheit. So we'll see how how close we get. Um, so Python. Uh, Seclis. That pie. Oh. No need to come up with TensorFlow. Thought we installed TensorFlow. I think I did. Did install TensorFlow. Looks like you already had it. Not quite. Why is it uninstalling NumPy? Good lord. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so Python uh, actually has a lot of these libraries. And um, do you think someone who's trying to learn machine learning like needs to learn, like, start with learn Python, or they can just jump right into these libraries? Um, I think starting with, oh, were we just not in our, are we still in our end? Is that why? I could be. Uh, actually, just like, oh, we just started the thing, the source, like, just the, the activate the environment, I think. Okay, so here's training. Um, and then as you see here, here's our one weight. And that's 1.807 
which is very close to our 1.8 that we were trying to actually go for, mm -hmm. and then 31.94. So it's like it's it's training to the exact function we want. Just also, why do I add it? Just activate uh, source activate pi 36. It's already source. there. It's right there. Yeah. Yeah, so I have uh, Anaconda that I use for my Python virtual environments, and we didn't actually activate it. Now, if you run it, it's going to actually find it right away. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then 71 degrees. So the model I trained, right? I never really saved it then. Yeah. So this, every time we want to use it, it would have to uh, retrain. Hmm. But you can save it to a model file and then load that in. But we're not doing that here. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to show that, like, when we do train it with just the the one and the the one input and the one output, that it, it is training how we expected and getting like those like exact numbers that we wanted. Okay. Um, and then since we are using bias here, then we can also see how if we change use bias to be false. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna do pretty too well. Probably not. Um, let's see. So we're in our, um, OK, it's actually at least moving along. Cool. So now we have one weight, and it's 2.28, uh, which so it went higher to kind of, I think, account for that uh, the missing plus, plus 32. 32. Okay. And then as you can see, 49 degrees, and it should be 71. Yeah. It's definitely not 40 something. But um, okay. yeah, so. So, is it safe to say then that we should always use bias? Yeah, yeah. Most of like uh, this use bias true. Um, you don't even need to have that in there by it's default. Deep. It's it's there. Okay. Um, I just had it there so it's easier to toggle back and forth. Um, but yeah, most of the time everybody uses bias um, because it we 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 do need to be able to go away from the origin and. Um, then if we go back to this Keras net, um, I'm gonna uh, let's just copy it back from the original one so that because I think you have to fiddle too much yeah. with that. <laughs> okay, I think that's the. Let's take a quick look uh, at it. I, I didn't. Not, no. Okay, okay, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna get it unless I just pasted it back here. <laughs> that would be. Okay, copy that. Come here. Copy everything, delete, and paste. All right, then. Yeah, good. Better? OK, yeah. cool. Cool. See. All right, so let's the, talk Talk me through what's, what's happening here right. now. Now, OK. So we want so, to get like a square function? Yeah, now we have a function. It's just, yeah, x squared. That's what we're trying to map. OK. Um, and then so I have a bunch of these values here. And um, so this time we're using. Uh, 64 nodes, and uh, so there's two hidden layers. Mm -hmm. Each have 64 nodes. Wow. And one input and one output. And both of them have, uh, I think that I see the ReLU. Yeah, I don't both. know what the activation meant, but I'm guessing that's the yeah, added the, function. The nonlinearity or activation. Okay. Yeah, that's the that's getting applied to the nodes. Um, so if we we're training for 500 epochs, and then right here we're just printing. The expected function output, and then what the model is giving us for all those values. So one more time, the epoch is still basically the steps, um, because it so, looked like here we had like epoch thousand after thousand. Right. So epoch is one epoch is every once every piece of training data has been trained. That's one epoch. Um, so here we have um, a small data set, and there's only one batch. So once one batch is finished, that's one. It's equal to one epoch. Okay. Um, but sometimes we'll have multiple batches, so maybe three batches is one epoch, and each piece of training data I think is one step. So there's eight out of eight steps because there's eight pieces of training data. It's not in this one, but in the other one. Right. Um, and a thousand epochs. Okay. So it went through each piece of uh, training, training data, data a thousand times. Okay. This time we're doing 500. Yeah. So Python. Keras, uh, Keras, Nets. We're going to have fun with the, uh, the pop up again. Oh, OK. So that's going to pop up on that screen. Yeah. 
and I'm gonna try to uh, l bring it back to reality with our screen here. Okay. So as you can see, it's it's kind of fitting pretty well. Um, not great, as you can see in some areas. Um, and so this is like an example of like a, a decent fit. But if we want to make it better, we can do things like playing around with how many layers we have. So, and that's like something like if we just keep adding more and more layers, um, let's like bump this up to like a thousand. That's probably way too many. Let's just say two fifty six. Yeah, two fifty six, and let's do. Didn't type two fifty six in. You know what? Right. You're stop, right. Stop being lazy. <laughs> two fifty six. Uh, and let's add another one of these. Oh wow. Let's just add a bunch. Let's go crazy. Um, okay, we got to close it. Yeah. Uh, we yeah, should have closed that in the first place. Yeah, we should have done that. Oh, huh? Okay. Yeah. Huh. All right, we closed it. So now let's just before we run it, let's just like talk about what's going on. Now we have four uh, layers. Yeah, of four, four each of them layers. Each of them having two hundred fifty six nodes. Right. So what would be the difference between adding this versus like a one layer with thousand twenty four nodes? Um, right. So I'm gonna go into more what, like tweaking these to okay. see how it like affects. Um, and and like correct me if I'm wrong. Is tweaking this called hyperparameters? I heard that word somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, and so like that that was like one of the biggest questions for me. Um people are always like, Oh yeah, hidden layers, but then you're always like, Well, how many hidden layers, how many nodes in each layer? And it's just kind of an art to it. You have to, you know, see how it is like affecting your data. You don't want to overfit things, you don't um that's like where like the real like data science -y kind of part comes in, um, where it's just like a lot of, you know, tweaking. Okay, so let's let's see how this goes. Boy, it's doing a lot of things. Okay, okay. I will, oh, that's not too bad. Uh, Here, wait. Don't even show that one yet. I'll just bring it just to like okay. show. So it's about the same, but this is going to take like a lot more uh, computation. And as you can see down here, it's starting to get like a little bit wonky. But I want to bump up these training steps real quick so we can see what like a real overfit one would look like. 5,000 epochs. Yeah. OK. Yeah, a lot of times I might say steps, just uh, which is different. But yeah, 5,000 epochs. Let's see. Boy, that, that's taking some time. Oh, yeah. But this is, this is nothing compared to training uh, image recognition models that can take uh, hours. <laughs> Okay, okay, this is this is interesting. We have successfully like broke machine yeah. learning. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, just jacking up the numbers as high as possible doesn't give you great results. So like how do we then level, like how do you salvage this then? Like how do you like, what, what do we do to get, and you said there's an art to it, but also there, but there is no art without any science. <laughs> so, like, what is the science behind it then? To right. So, so generally, if if the model is looking like really bad like that, and the numbers are like all really high, like we can start by like scaling it back to like a thousand or uh, whatever, and see if that helps. And if that helps, then you're probably going in the right direction, and you can go even lower or. Bumped so like the, then what's with the look we from like uh, two layers we bump to like double the layer, um, and you, you didn't get much gain, but it yeah. also didn't get really bad. But if we if we change this back to sixty four, sixty four, and then let's get rid of these two again. So you're in a thousand step and back to sixty four and sixty four. Uh, we're gonna bump this one back up to five thousand again. Okay, and we'll see how bad it gets this time. It probably won't get as bad just because there's not as many layers for mm. it to like things to go haywire. Fingers crossed. I don't know. It's again an art. <laughs> I mean, more more knowledgeable people probably uh, have a better intuition than me. But yeah. actually, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Um, 
So this one is like pretty much, I think, on par with what we had before. Yeah, this is like decent. Um, again, it's like a little bit worse, I think, than less steps, but it doesn't get as like wonky. Um, and so, so like the more steps made it worse. Is it because is it, is it such a like a like a known resulted function for us? So the more the more you keep training, the more things normally start to overfit. But normally, I mean. When you say overfit, uh, I would expect overfitting to like fit truly to the red, like it like point by point. But for right. when it did like two fifty six four layers over like five thousand steps, it just at the end it just gave up and gave a straight line. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm just gonna write on this one. It says do not write. Uh, let me... uh, so like this right here, you could consider that overfit. It's not really a bad overfit. It'll probably uh, work pretty well. But then there's like this, which is like, that's like probably really overfit. It's hard to say. And then there's also like, you know, it's still hitting all the points. And like, there's there's just different levels. Uh, uh, one really one actually saw that cat sitting there. Yeah. It was the camera was not there. Do it again. Give me the erase. Uh, okay, there you go. So Nick is explaining overfitting again. So we have these three points, and we can fit a line through there. And we probably we won't necessarily say that's overfit. It's hard to tell. It, it's hitting all the points exactly, but it's probably an okay. Um, but then there's like this, which is like that's also pro that's probably more overfit because like once your your lines start getting a little bit more crazy, it's it's probably not fitting something as natural as you think. Okay. Um, so we can say that's overfit, but then there's like levels of overfitness. It can get like crazy overfit where it goes like this and just all over the place, still hitting all of your points, but it's, it just it's like goes yeah crazy. Okay. Um, and then that's kind of like giving it more and more layers. It's giving it more and more room to go off the walls. You right. know? So with this like only 64 nodes and two layers, it doesn't give it as much room to get really creative. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's why lowering the nose is, is like that. Um, but then we can also see how, if we just drop this, drop this down to 500 again, we can also see how just, you know, a lot of times it's just better training data. If we add 200 and negative 200 to this uh, data set, um, and we go back to our original 6464 and 500 epochs, um, we can see, did I save it? Yeah. We can see how much better it gets in theory. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So as you can see, this is like, the, the same model structure as the original one, just with a, two more data points, a million times better. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the times, it's just like getting better training data. I think that's like part of the biggest thing is just having really good training data can really help like, fit your model. Um, and just adding more and more layers doesn't necessarily make it a better model. OK. And then one more. Fun experience. Let's close that first. Like this. Right. <laughs> Smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's that's a that's a training model that I ran. <laughs> I learned from a previous mistake. So, same exact model. If we get rid of this. Uh, so that was the activation. Yeah, we're getting rid of this ReLU. So we. So this time we're telling that we can't really do any uh, nonlinear stuff. Right. So, so he's going to try to fit it in like a linear algorithm? Yes. Oh, boy. Smart cookie right here. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this looks. How about like, uh, we can also like try the sigmoid and other ones to see if those does any better. Yeah. Oh, boy. OK. <laughs> oh, well, I'm just laughing because I just saw that on the different screen. But you're going to see it in a second. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, whenever I mean, it's a cool logo design, but not necessarily yeah. good. <laughs> so yeah, whenever you have 
no no activation function, it's hard to actually map at so, that point. Like you want to try like a, like a different activation point? Yeah, maybe? let's, Just let's to test. try. I mean, I think like for today we have. I mean, I have had enough like new terminology that I learned. Yeah. But why are you getting rid of um, like? I'm just gonna go back to like the original uh, one just so we have like a a better ground point. All right, so activation equals um, let's try sig mode. I think I remember the word sigmoid from um, uh, what class was it? I think it was a, a electronics course, like you know, a, a network. Yeah, yeah. I think if yeah, yeah, yeah. you use like filters and stuff, you'll probably hear sigmoid. You'll probably also hear cross correlation and convolutions, which we'll be talking about later. Okay. So a lot of a lot of signal processing kind of stuff right. comes into play here. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that's the proper. Capitalization or it whatnot. Fails, it fails. Let's see. It okay. didn't fail. It didn't fail. Oh, Wait. Whoa. Whoa. I don't think. I don't think it. Like, there's another one problem I find about Python. <laughs> like, if a function didn't find anything, I think it just took it as a, like a linear. It didn't take it as anything. Yeah. Let's try. Um, uh, so probably. Let's try the, the pants one. Oh, we didn't close it. I. <laughs> Hold on, let me try to see if I can access this deal. Oh, I can. Okay. okay. I think the last time was just an issue. If this... Let's try this bad boy. No. Oh. Interesting. Are you calling it something? <laughs> Maybe. I'm not really sure. Maybe. All right. The, the furiously Googling stuff now. Um, and uh, another thing is like not just in machine learning. I think many other things. Uh, you, I mean, initially just getting to know what you need to know is, I think, super important. Um, once you once you kind of like pass that point, you can almost eighty five percent of the time just like go about googling and figuring out. Knowing what to ask is, I think, a lot more difficult than just like. Because I actually have tried like learning machine learning a couple of times, but just the initial like the flow of things is so much. I think there is a question thread in Quora about like how to become a machine learning engineer, and people make it sound like you have to. It's make it sound so much more difficult. And I understand uh, it is not like easy thing, but like some someone said you have to like study um, like theory for at least five years first. Before you touch any code, and then like it scarred me. Look up activations. I mean, it might be just like my library doesn't have it, but if you just put it. Ah, it's okay. We okay. can. Uh, we'll uh, actually here. Can I open up Chrome? It'll probably open there. <laughs> Bring him over here. Okay, I got you. Um, okay. There's this cool thing. It's playground dot tensorflow dot org. Um, some of you might have seen this before. I've seen this a lot, and when I first started out, I had no idea like what was going on. Um, so I think it's helpful for someone to explain it. And this is, you can play around in here without having to do all the Keras stuff that I was doing over there and to like try and fit these functions. So the goal is we have some, some data, right? Oh, awesome. um, and then we have these inputs. We're not gonna play around with any of these. I feel like these are kind of sort of cheating, um, not necessarily, but this is giving us x and y. These are applying like a square to the input x and y or multiplying x times x2 and taking the sign of them. This can give us like, uh, sometimes it makes it easier to train a model without having to have more layers. But a lot of the times, like if we're just so what, getting. If I'm like, sorry to cut you off, but like what does this in, like image represent? That like x1 being this half orange, half blue thing? Um, so x1 I think is the, 
x1. I think that's the, uh, I think this is negative, this is positive, and it, because this is the x-axis. So I go in from here to here, it's going from uh, negative x to positive x. Um, and then here, this x2 is considered y, so going from negative y to positive y, it gets blue. Um, so it's, it's a little confusing as like to what their shapes are. You can kind of just ignore them, just pretend x and y. Um, so to start off, we'll start off with this, and we'll do four neurons. Let's just, we can get rid of that layer for now. Activation, it's using tanch as default, but if we switch it to linear, and we just run this, we can see it fits really well because um, it's linear. It's, what if we, like, we stop it and like start fusing neurons that we have? We probably just do it all the way to one, and it'll still probably work pretty well. Huh. Um, so let's add those four back, and then go to this. As you can see, it's not really fitting because it, you can't really fit a line to any of these other functions. Um, so here we can switch back to which one do you want to do? Uh, sigmoid, because we couldn't get it. All right, so let's do sigmoid and the circle. As you can see, it's it's starting to fit. We've successfully fit the data for you. Yeah. And we can try with these squares. Oh, nice. Okay. And then the computer is heating up furiously. I mean, it's just so Chrome. Snap, it's a, it, I, I, I think that it has nothing to do with uh, machine learning or anything. It's Chrome. <laughs> well, this is, this is pretty probably hardware intensive for uh, a web app. Um, but it, it's not able to really fit this one very well just because. It's only this one layer of these four names. So if I want to keep that one, um, what are we looking at? Yeah, let's, let's try to start out probably again, just as a comparison to the lava. Well, that was really fast. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think this one is kind of getting maybe a little bit better. It seems like it's... I mean... Like from what we saw earlier, the whether the review function or other function works, it's the function is always to be like fast, like the safe condition. But the sigmoid probably has to do a lot more multiplication of this. Yeah, one. I'm not sure if if it's um, if it was training faster, like epochs wise, or if the epochs were happening faster. I'd probably not. But um, it's just interesting to see how how they. Can okay, like what if we like just add like a bunch of hidden there? So one plus up to sixty three. Whoa, this is a cool image. I don't know. Um, and then if we go back to here, okay, great, great, beautiful. And then let's let this one run a little bit. I, I see the starting to, to get a little bit of a curve to it. But it's like it's like oh. struggling. <laughs> yeah. Let's um let's stop it. Let's oh yeah, let's go back to um what you said earlier. Like eight of these neurons. Versus like uh, two or four. Us. Yeah. And how about we use a different activation? Um ten eight. Right. I'm just I just saw so I'm just randomly putting a number out. Um so let's let's stop it at like five hundred. So, eh. and then this probably isn't going to, let's see, yeah, let's try like this many, four, or five, let's just do two of these. Five, this is still eight, right? One, two, no, three. ten. Okay. It probably won't do very well. Let's see. What does the graph on the spectrum? Okay, so this is the training loss. loss. Um, it's kind of like how wrong the function was. So, right so you want to have a really low loss. It's, it's so the, the training loss is like half. Uh, yeah, and then that's the test And loss that has higher. to do with, I think that has to do because of the circle. If you just choose one half, you're going to be half wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. So let's just bump this up like all the way. All of them at eight? Are you trying to calculate my computer? 
Okay. No, well, as long as they're honest. <laughs> Let's see. It's, I don't think it's going any better here either. Oh, it's, it's, it's because the loss is, oh, loss is going down actually. That's what I'm saying. Like, the loss price initially went up. Then actually started going down. That's what I was, okay, so that can happen. And it's kind of like, oh, here. Oh, you can also mess around with the button here. Let's do it. Yeah, 12 total nodes in P there. So what is the, what does the faster learning rate mean? Um so it, it learns faster. But you do not ooh, whoa whoa we have that quick. <laughs> so sometimes whenever you have a faster learning rate, it can um, it can jump past like the optimal solution too fast. So like a slower learning rate it's like more debate baby steps. So like it's kinda it's good man. It's like is it though? It's like, let's try it right here. But yeah, I don't know. It's just, oh, wow. Wow. that was really fast. That was, that's pretty decent. I think um, we can call this one for that. Yeah. 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 So, let's stop it. Yeah. And only 247 to show the test data. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I think this is a we have we had a, about a one and a half hour for stream, so this is a good spot. Time flies. Time, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. yeah so, so uh, do you have any final questions? Ah, uh, so many, so many. Uh, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna just like hold on to that for the next week stuff. So like, what can we people? So next week we're gonna do some. Uh, if you're interested, I'm, I'm gonna teach you some Docker stuff. Uh, maybe starting with Docker, like similar things, but. I'm not gonna have as much uh, visualization as you did, <laughs> but I'm gonna have some idea, like some interesting things about Docker. So if people are interested, please do join. And next next week when you're teaching again, what can people who are watching now can expect? Well, that is TBA. TBA, okay. Um, but uh, I don't know. I think we'll probably either do move on to learning more about like convolutions, okay. like how to do image. Um, Inferences, or we'll we'll go over how to actually train this and all that. We'll probably do that first. I'll okay. probably teach how to train this. Okay, um, got it. So um, maybe look forward to training your own neural net and using it for inferencing without using any libraries. Okay, so that's the first example we did, kind of similar to that. Right, but then how to actually get those weights. Ah, okay, got it. All right, so thanks everyone for joining, and uh, see you next time, I guess. See ya. Well, now it's still on the other screen. Okay.